Hey guys, welcome to 2019. I'm Will Darling from edmtips.com where I share tips, tricks and tutorials for helping you make world-class electronic dance music. Now I know this video is a few weeks late, but I've been on holiday. I have actually got a tan even though you can't see it, but I wanted to make this video to share with you what I think is going to really help you become successful in 2019 with regards to your music production and your music production career. Now these are just my opinions, this is what I've learned over the years, so take on board what you want, discard what doesn't resonate with you and I hope you enjoy. Now I've included a free gift below for complete new producers if you're just getting started in EDM production in 2019. So if you want some free samples, some free presets, be sure to click the link below this video now. Thanks for subscribing and if you like this video please share it with your friends. I'm going to really work on YouTube this year. I want to build this channel big. So without further ado let's look at these 10 tips for how to succeed in music production 2019. Now whether you like his music or not, Ed Sheeran is massively successful and he said something in an interview I saw with him about a dirty tap and he likened music creation to running a dirty tap and you've got to let it run a while and the shitty water comes out but after a while the clean water comes out and what he means by that is basically you've got to produce a lot of music and at first it's just it's gonna suck. Um, your first music, your first tunes, they won't be good. Uh, but if you do it for long enough and if you keep learning each time, eventually the water's going to run clean. But it's about producing a lot of music as quickly as you can to get the bad stuff out of your system until the water starts flowing clean. Now my next tip is to make music that you like or at least strive to make music that you like because of course our music never really lives up to our expectations. But this way, even if other people don't like your music or it doesn't get signed for whatever reason, if you're making music that you like, then you can't lose. You're going to enjoy the process, you're going to enjoy the finished product. If other people like it, that's great. But if they don't, at least you haven't wasted your time making music that you didn't really like that much anyway. And also, it generally shines through. If you're trying to make music solely to be successful and you don't like it yourself, that general, and unless you're really skilled at creating music, that's going to show through and it's not going to resonate with people. So make music that you like. Now the next tip is to be consistent. If you think about music production like a water pump where you pump it and pump it and pump it and pump it and the water's being pulled up from the ground and eventually it's going to come out the, the pump at the end. But if you pump it for six months, 12 months, and the water's rising, and then you, you leave the pump and you stop producing for six months or 12 months, that, that water's gonna go back down again. And then you've gotta put all that effort in to start building a buzz, to start making your contacts again. Now I've, I've done this myself and I know what this is like. I stopped producing for a year or so, and the, the buzz I had, the buzz I built up, had dwindled away so it was much harder to then kickstart it all again. So consistency is key when it comes to music production. So this year just try and get a routine in where you're producing music, if not every day, at least every couple of days. Now it doesn't have to even be for long, just a couple of hours every day or a couple of hours every two days just to get that consistency and that momentum going. Now the next key element to your success is goals and habits. Now I say goals and habits because it's really easy and I'm guilty of this as much as anyone for writing these big fat goals at the beginning of each year like I want to produce with this producer, I want to produce with that producer etc. I want to get signed with that label and that is really important but more important than that is actually forming habits and systems that's going to help you develop those habits. So for instance you might have the goal of working or doing a remix for a, a producer that you love like Flume or Odessa, someone like that. So you might say that's what you want to do by the end of the year. But how are you going to do that? Having that goal on your wall and seeing it every day, unless there is a structure of habit that's going to help you get there, then you're just going to end up frustrated because you're not going to hit it. So an example, for instance, would be 
Okay, if I want to do this remix for this particular producer, I know that I need to produce music every week, so that's two hours a day, every day, five days a week, and then I've got two days break if I want. So what's, what systems can I develop to help me form that habit? Well, if I live with someone, I might say to them, okay, between 6 and 8 a.m. every morning, that's my production time, so I'm going into this room, the door's closed, please don't interrupt me. So each morning you can set your alarm at quarter to six, brew up a coffee, whatever, you go in there, you work, you don't have the internet, you don't have the phone, and you just get that work done. That is an example of creating a system to help form that habit because your willpower is not strong enough. You can rely on it sometimes, but by the end of the day, you're tired, you, you're gonna wanna go out with your friends or chill out and have a beer or something. So by actually having systems that help you enforce these habits, that's how you're gonna actually start achieving your goals in 2019. Now this is a huge one and we're all guilty of it, but don't spend money on new plugins unless they're for a very specific reason. It's so tempting to, to see the next sexiest plugin or read about it in Future Music Magazine or wherever, and then go and buy it hoping that it's gonna make your music good, but it doesn't. Trust me, you can make absolutely world-class music with the stock plugins in your door already. So if you spend some time getting to really know the plugins that you have, and sure, by all means, it's your money, spend money on third-party plugins, and some of them are really good. But make sure that you're not doing it just to procrastinate or save your music. Make sure that you're spending your money on plugins that are really gonna up your game. More important than spending money on plugins and equipment is actually just writing songs, getting tracks written, learning what you've got, and getting the most out of it. You will get so much satisfaction and then when you do actually upgrade to some third-party plugins, you're gonna know the fundamentals of how plugins work anyway, because you know your stock ones inside out. So now we're going on from workflow into actual how to market your music and how to start building a name for yourself. Well, of course, you've got the social media channels that you can, you, you can sign up to and just make sure you're consistent across all of them. I recommend just choosing one or two that you enjoy using. Like I like Instagram, I don't like Twitter. So I've stopped using it because I know that it's actually gonna do more harm than good to have a half-assed channel rather than having one or two social channels that you actually contribute to. But more important than the social channels is actually to start collecting an email list. And you can do this by using something like MailChimp and building a website on Squarespace or WordPress, something simple, and then start getting people signing up to your mailing list because this, this is the gold and this is where your fans lie. So a couple of years ago, or a few years ago, I had about 20,000 followers on SoundCloud. And for whatever reason, I'd done a remix that I actually had permission to post. It was a Calvin Harris remix. And for, for whatever reason, SoundCloud said, that's it, you're in breach of copyright, we're closing down your account. And like that overnight, I lost 20,000 followers. Now that was a really hard lesson to learn. So now, same with EDM tips, I, I collect email addresses from people who want to hear from me and who want to hear my music, because that list is yours. If the platform ceases to be, if something comes along and wipes out your profile for whatever reason, You've still got those emails, they are yours and they are your fans. So start collecting the email addresses from your fans and you will not regret it. The next is to contribute to the community. So get on Reddit, get on the Facebook groups, head over to edmtips.com, write some comments below this video, whatever it is, start forging relationships because this music industry is about forging relationships. It's not how skilled you are anymore. There are so many skilled people out there. You have to forge relationships. You have to be nice to people. You have to be respectful for people. And a few months, maybe a year or two down the line, these relationships start coming to fruition. Someone will remember you and they'll think, oh yeah, that guy, he was nice. He had good music. Uh, let's hook up with him, see if he wants to do a collaboration. Uh, and you just don't know what's gonna come from it. So contribute to the community. Be nice, get out there, get to some events, start making friends, and that is what this industry is all about. The next point is to be bold. 
Don't be scared of getting criticism. I know what it's like. Of course, no one likes to be told that their music sucks, but actually, if you seek feedback, that's the fastest way you're gonna learn about what's working and what's not. But remember to seek feedback from people who actually listen to your genre of music. Because if you ask someone who only listens to rock music what they think of your trap or your drum and bass, then they're gonna say they don't like it. Now that doesn't mean it's not good, it just means it's not their taste. So ask people who like your style of music for feedback and you're gonna get much more useful replies. And the final and most important tip to getting success in music production in 2019 is to have fun. Don't forget that that is why you started this in the first place. If you find yourself grinding away, being frustrated that you're not getting success, remember, it's all about the love. We love to make music, so enjoy it. Make sure that you're making music that you like to listen to. And yeah, have a good time because that really is the main reason that we make music in the first place. And that is it. Actually, no, there is one more thing. Look after yourself. Look after your health. Eat right. You get, get enough sleep. You're going to feel much more refreshed in the studio. You don't need to stay up till four in the morning writing music every night. If you do, your music's going to suffer. Your relationships are going to suffer your job's going to suffer or your study's going to suffer. So just look after yourself, have fun, be healthy, write loads of music, reach out to people, be bold and enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching and I will be back very soon with some more technical studio tips for producing the best EDM you can. Now don't forget if you are just starting out you can download my free starter pack for EDM producers below this video. It's got some samples, it's got some door templates, it's got some cheat sheets I've compiled. They're going to really help you get started if you are completely new to the EDM production game. Now I want you to do one more thing. I want you to introduce yourself, say hello in the comments below this video. Let's get this community going and until next time, cheers and happy producing.